Hello there! This is LEGO Dynasty, and today I'm bringing you guys my review of the LEGO Star Wars 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Troopers Battle Pack. It is set number 75359, comes with 108 pieces, and is rated ages 6 and up. Now this set retails in the United States for $19.99, and in Canada for $24.99. Now of course there was heavy rumors that this set was going to have a price increase, which uh, I believe is sort of being fixed. Uh, it's only really affected those in the United States, as far as I'm aware. Uh, so keep that in mind, depending on where you live. Um, look at what the set is actually supposed to be price-wise. Don't just pay what the stores are saying. Like, if, if it's still saying it's $27.99 US dollars or whatever it might be in your own currency, definitely wait until it goes back to what it's supposed to be. Because LEGO obviously decided last minute that charging $27.99 for... A small battle pack, you know, not like the uh, original 501st Clone Troopers battle pack. It's definitely a no-go and was definitely a smart decision, especially since this set isn't that, like, outstanding. Uh, just build-wise, etc. Not even getting into the whole, you know, debate about the helmet holes or anything yet. Uh, but just in general, this is your prototypical battle pack, and I'm glad LEGO did not end up increasing the price. I don't even know what that would have been in Canada. Uh, in Canadian dollars, I guess 32, maybe 34.99, which would have been absolutely sort of ridiculous for this set. Uh, but that's not to say that this set is only full of flaws. But let's get into that. Starting with the box, uh, it's your typical, you know, Lego Battle Pack box. You know, the rectangular style. It has the nice yellow stripe to match what Hasbro is doing. Definitely seems like that's something uh, Disney has asked. Uh, all the toy companies to do to sort of represent what era these sets are being bought in uh, and it is accurate being a Clone Wars set. Uh, you have the four minifigures including Clone Captain Vaughn and then the three three thirty second Clone Troopers. Top also shows Captain Vaughn. Back of the box has some nice scenery of Mandalore. Of course this is inspired by the Season 7 Siege of Mandalore arc quickly taking a look at the manual it is rendered images and i gotta say it really looks poor on this set like some rendered images uh don't look that bad uh this one i think is particular it just it looks like not like a lego set like a, a knockoff brand and at the end of the day doesn't take anything from the building experience but considering what they used to be uh these lowering costs when you know lego is a billion dollar or multi-billion dollar corporation and lastly before we get into the set and minifigures you can see the extra pieces of course you're left with quite a few of the extra visor pieces and uh, antenna pieces as they come in the separate baggie uh, as the, all the clone troopers have helmet holes you can technically use them on uh, your 332nd clone troopers or any other figures that have helmet holes of course uh, overall, only Captain Vaughn has been seen in canon as, you know, having a visor. So the rest of the clone troopers don't really need it. But if you wanted to, you definitely have that option. Take a look at our first minifigure. We have Captain Vaughn. We'll start with him as he is the most different from any of the other uh, 332nd clone troopers, including the previous one that came in the uh, battle or uh, AAT set uh, way back when in 2020. Uh, Overall, he's not much different. He has the helmet uh, holes, obviously, with the visor. Uh, it is not, it is more supposed to be sort of a reddish color and also include these lines or uh, symbols to represent, you know, Ahsoka's uh, leku, etc. But overall, they obviously weren't going to go above the extra mile in a, you know, $20 battle pack set. So they just went with a orange visor one honestly a bit of a maroon red uh, might have been more accurate i've seen some people use the maroon red ones from you know commander fox etc or uh the old uh arc trooper battle pack from way back when in 2012 uh in order to you know have a slightly more accurate uh, colored visor but it overall looks okay uh he does have this slight uh sort of marking on his uh, sort of uh, chest plate, I guess, or torso print there, as you can see, which uh, none of the other figures have, and is definitely a nice addition and is accurate. Now, the rest of the figure is pretty much exactly like a 501st Clone Trooper, uh, which is a little bit inaccurate. I guess I should say the back printing does have the proper jetpack. Um, 
is basically the same back print as you get with Commander Cody, which is definitely accurate as well and is nice to see LEGO do. Uh, as with his helmet off, you can see it is your typical clone trooper face, which is nice. Really, my big issue with this figure is the fact that on the website, they say for Captain Vaughn with a special helmet, and there's nothing special about it. He literally just has the uh, visor that you technically could put on any of the other clone troopers because it is a, uh, they are all using the helmet holes. So it's, it's just sort of stuff like that. I, I, Lego's marketing department has been really, I guess, off the ball in my opinion lately in what they're trying to do to like sell people to get these sets. And it's not just this set, it's been in a few other sets, I'm sure. If Next, you... we'll take a look at one of the 332nd Clone Troopers that has the blue jetpack. Um, so two of them have blue jetpacks, uh, and then the other one is a plane figure. So I'm not going to take off the jetpack. It's going to have the exact same printing as the one without, so I'll show off that. Again, it's going to have exactly the same sort of 501st printing as we've seen in the past. The only difference is the helmet uh, with the helmet holes. So again, you're gonna have the same face print. He still has standard Lego Star Wars blaster. And yeah, pretty nice to have the jetpack included. And then lastly, the one without the jetpack, just to show off the back print in there. Again, no difference in the face print. Uh, just a typical Lego Star Wars clone trooper. Now, before I get into the build, uh, I figure I would show off the differences between the two helmets uh, so on the right here, we have the one from the LEGO Star Wars AAT set from 2020. And then on the left is the one included in this set. So overall, the printing to me isn't that much different. But I definitely feel like I do personally prefer the 2021. I just think it looks a little bit better without having the extra inaccurate helmet hole uh, there. Again, if you guys don't care about that, doesn't matter like I'm still gonna get a few of these sets I still like the figure enough that I'll get a few of them I'm not gonna pay $30 uh, Canadian just to get more of these helmets especially since there's no difference in the torso print it's literally just the helmet uh, but to each is their own if you're not a fan I think you're entitled to your opinion if you like it or don't care you're perfectly fine saying that as well me personally I definitely feel these ones look a little bit better but I don't think these ones look absolutely trash or like uh, worst thing in the world that Lego's done. I definitely feel like uh, this is something I, I want to see Lego improve, uh, but I definitely don't think it's the worst thing Lego's done, and I think they have other issues they should fix sooner. Um, though, uh, I do think Lego could have simply included multiple versions of helmets in this set, you know, included the classic helmets, uh, because they're still in production for at least a little while longer with the 187th Clone Trooper uh, Battle Pack. And then uh, just including those helmets and then only including Captain Vaughn with helmet holes because he has the visor, I think would have made a lot more sense to me personally. Taking a look at the builds, we'll start off with this sort of a little cannon. Uh, it's obviously a stud shooter and it's it's okay. It's It's not like the craziest build as you can see. Just a couple of pieces, and it is a stud shooter, which is kind of nice. So, you know, you shoot it off, and then you can, of course, replace by placing the stud back into the stud shooter. Next up, we have the Swamp Speeder, and at the end of the day, a lot of the Battle Pack builds are completely made up by LEGO and aren't accurate whatsoever. And this one's definitely no exemption. I mean, there was no Swamp Seers during Mandalore. Uh, and it's it's a unique idea, you know, a 501st Swamp Speeder. Definitely a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be, personally. Especially when you heard that they might be charging more. Like, I can't believe LEGO even considered charging uh, so much more for this set. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, but... Uh, for this to be a typical battle pack build, this makes a lot of sense. Um, it definitely is okay. Like, you can fit your figures onto it, of course. You do have the weapon stand at the back, so we'll just place our rifle on there. And then grab our clone trooper and fit him right inside. Now, there is no, like, control panels or, uh, you know, anything to represent their controls. You're supposed to just... Use imagination, which is fine in a build like this. 
as you can see, looks it looks pretty decent. Um, I definitely feel like if you get a bunch of these, I wouldn't build all the small swamp speeders. I definitely try and create your own design. Maybe purchase design off Rebrickable or just come up with your own thing. Whatever you wanted to do, an ATRT or something different. I mean, people in the community can be really creative with what they design. And uh, so if you need ideas, I'm sure you can find some. Uh, the build itself is fine, but I definitely wouldn't want to build like a hundred of these. Uh, I definitely would mostly be looking at getting more of the clone troopers than anything, than uh, worrying about the build in this set. Now the build, of course, also has some extra stud shooters on the front, which is pretty nice. You have another sort of a clip here to place a weapon if you see fit. And that's pretty much it for the build. Um, it's pretty tiny, pretty nothing. Like, there's not a lot to say about it. It's definitely just your typical battle pack build. And uh, most of these battle packs, you're not really looking for the build. You're looking for the figures to army build. The LEGO Star Wars 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Trooper Battle Pack is an alright addition to the battle packs that we've seen before. I definitely don't think this is the greatest battle pack, but I don't think it's the worst one we've ever gotten either. It probably is honestly going to come down to your guys' thoughts on helmet holes. Me, I definitely prefer the older style helmets, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to collect a couple of these. I'm definitely not going to get a bunch like I would with some of the other sets. I definitely feel... Uh, or wish that LEGO would utilize both helmet molds in their sets because at the end they it doesn't cost them anything any different they don't have to keep using uh, one mold you know there's tons of sets that have multiple brand new molds that only use you know, um, that are only used once and I don't see how this could be any different why it would be a big deal especially even if they've already uh, stopped production on the you know what 87th clone troopers uh, set the Republic fighter tank like if that set's already like uh, done being made uh, because it's supposed to retire at the end of the year and they aren't making anything with those molds I definitely still feel that they could absolutely use both molds and in this case you know have the helmet hole helmet for uh, Captain Vaughn and then with the other 332nd clone troopers not have a helmet hole because I don't that's just what we see in canon they don't use it now if you're someone that loves to customize or use the uh helmet holes to you know add tons of accessories uh to your clone troopers then you're probably more okay with having uh helmet holes on all these figures and adding those uh accessories it's really just going to come down to your own opinions on that overall i definitely feel this is a battle pack to wait for it to go on sale they always go on sale so I would definitely wait uh, for either double points or it to go on sale at a separate retailer, especially if it is still at the inflated price point that LEGO was originally planning to charge. Of course, that won't be the case at LEGO stores, but if you're purchasing from a secondary retailer, such as a Walmart, Target, etc., there is a chance you might see the set at a higher price point than what it should be because that is what they were planning to originally charge the set at. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for that. You should only be about $19.99 US, uh, $24.99 Canadian and whatever those conversions amount to depending on where you live uh, elsewhere. With that being said, that's all my opinion. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this battle pack in the comments down below. Are you guys a fan of the helmet holes or do you not care at all? Please let me know in the comments down below. I'm very curious what overall everyone's thoughts are on them. Please leave a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed and have a great day everyone.